You've done all things well. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. You are worthy of our praise. Thank you, King of Kings. We worship you. Thank you. You've done all things well. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Eshedai. Eshedai. Elohim and Adonai. The all-sufficient God, have your way here today. Meet us at the point of our need. Answer questions in our heart. There is no need you cannot meet. The Eshada himself, show yourself alive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Eshadai. Thank you, King of Kings. Let no one return our shame. Thank you for meeting us at the point of our need. In Jesus' glorious name. Every heart desire of yours. I say God satisfying them in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not go empty handed. In Jesus mighty name. Praise the Lord I am more than a conqueror. Congratulations you may please be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is the place to be. This is our special anointing service. It's also our harvest Sunday. This also a covenant day of marital breakthrough service. I'm redeemed to the topmost top. That's God's word for us this month. And we've been exploring success, virtues, and kingdom still worship in all our Sunday services. I encourage you to please get the teaching of the, the, the previous Sundays. We're going to build up on that today, exploring success, virtues, and kingdom still worship. So we're looking at part 3A. In this first service today, remember the way to the top in this kingdom is service. Serve up to stay up.
Exploring success, virtues, and kingdom stewardship, we're going to look, approach it from two perspectives this morning. Number one, serving God, a platform for assessing supernatural wisdom. Say with me, supernatural wisdom. You know, there's natural wisdom, there's supernatural wisdom, there's demonic wisdom. Supernatural wisdom or divine wisdom here in a contest is the one that is peaceable, the wisdom that is from above, which is above all. The God kind of wisdom. There is the natural wisdom, common sense. And if you want to get common results, you'll be doing common sense. Nobody advised you to brush your mouth this morning before coming out. That's common sense, it teaches us that. Nobody advised you to take your bath. There is occultic wisdom, or demonic wisdom, or satanic wisdom. That is abracadabra, magic, 419. But what we are focusing on here is divine wisdom, supernatural wisdom, the wisdom that's from God. And that's one of the things you can get by serving God. 1 Timothy 1.17. 1 Timothy 1.17. Now, unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. God is the only wise God. When you read your Bible, sometimes read word by word. Now, they, only wise God. In English language, the word they is a definite article, which means there's no other one. Because if he says he's a wise God, that means there are other wise gods, including him. But the only wise God means that every other God, including those ones that cannot breathe, <laughs> that are foolish gods. The only wise God is your father. So you have relationship with wisdom. Jesus, the wisdom and the power of God, is your brother. The Holy Spirit, that is the wisdom of God, the spirit of wisdom, is inside you. I divorce you, therefore, from every form of foolishness. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible told us that he that walks with the wise shall be wise, and a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Proverbs 13, verse 20. So, you can't be walking with the only wise God and be foolish. It's not possible. Instead, so we are not walking with him rightly. And I discover that even in marriage, it is foolishness that destroys homes, not even the devil. Proverbs 14, verse 1. A wise woman builded her house, but a foolish woman plucked it out with her own hands. The same way to a wise man builds his house, and a foolish man plucks it down. If a man knows, for instance, that he and the wife, they are one. They are one flesh. So when you are beating your wife, you are beating yourself. And nobody, no matter how the mistake you make, you beat yourself. Will you beat yourself for mistake? Why are you beating your wife? You have strength to beat. Why not go to the gym? If the woman also knows that the, she and the husband is one, you won't be selling your husband somewhere. It's foolishness to sell your husband outside. That yeah, yeah, man, that stupid man. That one, a man. One day, they were distributing something to some widows. And the woman came and lined up, who was not a widow. And they asked her, ah, Madam, the husband is alive now. He said, that one, that man. <laughs> Foolishness of the highest order. Today, I divorce everyone under the sound of my voice from every form of foolishness. Amen. Serving God open source to the wisdom of God. Why? Serving God brings us into companionship with him. 
Mark 16, 20. They went everywhere and preached. And God was walking with them, confirming the world with signs and wonders. When you serve God, you have the privilege of having companionship with him. Our God is the only wise God. So when you walk with him, you have access to his supernatural wisdom. Supernatural wisdom. Supernatural wisdom. One day, during the construction of the first tabernacle, Somehow, the engineers and architects were arguing on certain issues because an error was discovered in the roof trusses. So, or in all the argument, they agreed that we have to bring down some beams. And the cost of that beam, they were told, is about the cost of one story building. And as they were trying to see what to do, that this is the only option. God's servant, Bishop Oyedebo, just passed by. And he was like, what? what is it? And they told him the story. He said, ah. Why do you want to bring the beam down? Because we want to um, bring in a crane so that we can correct the problem at the road truss. He said, ah, why not deflate the tire or the crane, push it inside, and then get the organizer to pump it? That saved the cost of one story building, sir. Saved me wisdom. The wisdom at work in this commission, I command it to be released so everyone under the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. Amen. Daniel was a man dedicated to the service of God. Did you see how wise he was? Enjoy the flow of supernatural wisdom. It was a Daniel that Proposing in his heart not to defile himself with the king's meat. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Others were eating the king's meat. He said, no. I will not defile myself. But in verse 17. For those four children, the Bible said God gave them knowledge and skill. And wisdom. And Daniel had understanding of, the, of all visions and dreams. To the extent in Daniel 1.21, the Bible says, oh, this Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. You know what that was? He was relevant in four administrations. No matter who comes to power, they will look for Daniel because of the wisdom. One time, the, the son of Uncle Nebu came, he decided to push him aside. The mother told him, look for that Daniel. And when he saw him, he said, ah, <laughs> this boy, <laughs> I doubt that Daniel. In other words, he doesn't look like it, but he has what he takes. Now hear me, you will not look like it, but you will have what he takes. Is it not this Daniel that Uncle Nebu slept and had a dream and forgot the dream? Even if you slept with your wife, will, you, will your wife know the dream? And he said, except you put tell me the dream <laughs> and interpretation, you're all dead men. And everybody started running Heta Sketa. But Daniel went to the king, give us some time. There is a God in heaven who knows it, everything. He reveals secrets. And Daniel and the other Hebrew boys went to God in the night. And in Daniel chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible told us God revealed to them the vision in the night season. God showed them the secret. And they came back to Okonebu and told him everything. That was how they were enthroned in a strange land. Don't tell me I'm not an indigent. That's why things are not going well. Check. Do you have relevant wisdom to match? They served God. They enjoyed wisdom. To the extent that a time came in Daniel 5, 11, that Uncle Nebu's son was told, go and look for this Daniel. Go and look for him. You can't push him aside. Your father used him, so you too get him and use him. Number two, serving God is a platform for glory and honor for the redeemed. Serving God is a platform for glory and honor for the redeemed. And if there's anything we need in our lives today, we need glory and honor. You can't enjoy glory and not be attractive. You can't enjoy honor and not be favored. And favor <laughs> can 
One day favor can give you what 1,000 days of labor cannot deliver to you. Honor is the mother of favor. The Bible told us that every soul winner is wise. Proverbs 11.30 For he that winneth soul is wise. And we are told that the wise will inherit glory. The wise will inherit what? What is the inheritance of the wise? Glory. But the promotion of this fool is shame. So compare. Anytime a fool is promoted, shame is it. Will be the end result. So it means, if I can do small mathematics here, Foolishness will lead to shame, while wisdom will lead to glory. So, if wisdom will lead to glory, and the way to wisdom is winning souls, why won't I win souls? Why won't I serve God by winning souls to him, telling people about Jesus, bringing people to Jesus? He that winneth soul. Winneth is in present continuous tense. See, tomorrow, he that winneth soul is wise. He that winneth no soul is what? He that winneth no soul is what? You are the one that said it. <laughs> Have you not discovered, the Bible told us in Proverbs 14, 28, that in the multitude of men is the king's glory. So God takes glory in the multitude of people. So you cannot be part of God bringing glory to God and not enjoy glory. So me I hear. You know, God said, anyone that honors me, I will honor the person. First Samuel 2.30. Therefore, the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and thy house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall likely be esteemed. Which means, one of the ways we honor God is by bringing people to him. In the multitude of men is the king's glory. God is the king of kings. So when you bring people to him, you are honoring him. If you are not bringing people to him, you are dishonoring him. Let's work up, sir. Let's work up, man. Look at somebody like David. That serves as a good example to us. A celebrated servant of God. God said, I found David my servant. Can God conveniently call you and I his servant? I found David my servant. With my holy anointing oil, I have anointed him. With whom, by, with whom by a hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. He said, the enemy shall not exert upon him. The sons of wickedness shall not flit him. I'll beat down his foot before him, and I'll plague them that hate him. Before his face. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his son be exalted. To show you that David was a soul winner. David was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ Jesus. <laughs> he was not ashamed to testify of his God. There are some people, that if you don't know what to tell anybody, start with your own personal testimonies, what God has done for you. Consider what God has done for you. Serve him with all your heart. In all truth, Consider what God has done for you. If he has done anything for you, it's enough for you to use that as a springboard to reach out to others. He said you don't have. How about the ones who are hearing here every day that God is doing in the lives of people? Or are you part of those that are, is he going to, do you know whether it's David or that? Are you that type of person? In church, not outside. That shows you what goes on in the minds of some people. Even some people think maybe they're telling people what to come and say. <laughs> Who has that time? 
God will soon do something in your life that you know they are not telling them what to come and say. <laughs> it is your turn for your own testimony. David was not ashamed to testify before kings, not mean people. Psalm 119 verse 46. That thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage. So I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and I will not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. Not mean people. Who, some ordinary person you enter keke with, you can't talk to the person. Is it a traditional ruler you go and minister to? But David said, I'm not ashamed. Your testimony before kings, he will tell them. Everybody knew he was serving God. Some carry their Bible and I ask them where they're going. They say, going somewhere. You can't tell them I'm going to church. I'm going somewhere. Church somewhere. Remember, he said, if you will not be ashamed of me before men, I will not be ashamed of you before my father. That's why David went to the field where the Israelites were fighting the Philistines. Remember, his three brothers were already in the army there. He went to take food to them. The king himself saw was so afraid. That's why. When Saul said, David, take the armor and go and fight Goliath, if he knew the armor can deliver, bring the result, why didn't he wear it? But it wasn't just that. It was because of his love for God, because of his addiction in the service of God and the interest of God that he went, carried his life in his hand to confront Goliath. You have come against me in the name of your God. I come against you in the name of God of Israel, whose are means to have defied. At the end of the day, when he killed Goliath, you know, it became something else. The woman began to sing. Saul has killed his thousand. David has killed his ten thousand. Envy resulted. Saul wanted to kill him by all means. But that first Samuel 18, 6 to 8. But thank God, because it was God he was serving, God delivered him. God will deliver you in the name of Jesus. Amen. At the end of the day, he ended up as one of the most revered kings of Israel in history. God himself said, this is the man after my own heart. First King 13, 14. Do you know that God gave David a street in heaven? As a matter of fact, God used his holiness to swear. Just like God swore by himself to Abraham, God used his holiness. The most important aspect of God, God used it to swear to David. Read Psalm 89. God swore with his holiness to David. Please, if you are truly serving God and the interests of his kingdom, you will always end in glory and honor. Look at the kind of honor David has today. The year, I think 1996, they celebrated 3,000 years, David. Um, made Judah the city of David. Made Jerusalem the city of David. If you are serving God and the interests of his kingdom, please be sure of this that you will end in glory and honor. And I pray for someone here who has made up his or her mind to serve and who has been serving, that glory and honor will be your crown. Amen. John 13, 12, 23 to 26. Remember. Especially verse 26. Jesus said, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, he shall also be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. He will my father honor. And if your Bible is like my own, those are red-lettered words, which means the direct words that Jesus spoke on the earth here. So which means if you serve God, you will end up in honor. I pray that nothing will distract anyone from seeing this honor in Jesus' mighty name. 
can go ahead to see biblical examples of people who enjoy biblical success on the platform of serving God. For instance, Job, the man called Job, he was a servant of God. He was a businessman. You don't need to be a pastor or a pope or a bishop before you serve God. Job was a businessman, but a servant of God. He was a greater businessman in his day, sir, but he served God. See, he had time to serve God. Because some people now say, I'm too busy. It's a lie. You have time for whatever you want to have time for. Hmm? People who watch football, create time to watch football. People who go to fellowship or bottle, you know what I mean? They have time for it. <laughs> you have time for whatever you have time for. You want to have time for. Job 1, 1 to 3. And there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were, we are born unto him seven sons and seven, three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses. And a, a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And I used to tell people, if uh, Job was to be alive today, maybe he'd be the president of OPEC. You know, rocks were pouring out for him, rivers of oil. <laughs> it's not the uh, palm oil, you know. Oil and gas. This Job was so great that he troubled the devil. I believe he must have tried everything to stop him, but he couldn't. And he came to God and started complaining. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him on the earth. A perfect man, an upright man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they say, ah, God. Does Job serve you for naught? Which means there is always a gain for serving God, sir. Does Job, are you not the one that has blessed the work of his hand? That his substance is increased in the land. So it's possible to serve God and be blessed, sir. It's possible to be righteous and be blessed. Please, let's serve him. Let's serve him. This Job was a man that told us that when he was in the time of his youth, the secret of God was in his tabernacle. Look at Job 29, 4 to 17. Look at the secret he used. He was a helper to the helpless. He was eye to the blind. He was a voice to the voiceless. He was a husband of the widow. The secret that Job traded with that made him to become the greatest in the East. Even when the devil attacked him, remember, when he prayed for his friend, God gave him double. He ended up with double what he had from the beginning. Job 42, 10 to 14. It is possible to serve God and be honored and be glorified. I pray that someone's choice today of serving the God, or serving the God of this commission, the God of heaven will end up and culminate in massive honor and glory. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' glorious name. Anyway, today is our covenant of marital breakthrough. Quickly, let's see keys to commanding marital breakthrough. Keys to commanding marital breakthrough. Every challenge marital destiny today which includes marital spares, marital delay, disappointment, tension, storms, crisis in homes, all manifestation of oppression shall come to an end today in the name of Jesus. My Bible told me, surely there is an end, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Today marks the end of every evil report concerning your marital destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody is going to be located today, and somebody will locate today. In the name of Jesus. Ah, this is how we say it. One day in the cartoon, I made something, I made a statement like this. And a lady was uh, in the church. And uh, not that somebody was inside the church, oh, and they said, see what pastor said, let me be encouraged to go and talk to her. No. And somebody traveled from Akwanga in Nasrawa State the same day and came to make proposal to her. Now hear me. You will hear good news today. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 68 verse 6. God set the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. God is still in the business of setting solitary. He was one that sets up families. And everyone here today desiring to have a family of his or her own, desiring for their children, for their loved ones, their nieces, their nephews, their cousins, God of heaven will make it happen in the name of Jesus. Miracle marriages will begin to take place in our midst in the name of Jesus. A time we come here, we'll do seven, ten together. In Jesus' mighty name. So shall it be. But you see, whatever is wrestling with your marital destiny, we are going to stop them today. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Any power from any altar, whether from your father's house, from your mother's house, any altar speaking against your marital destiny, your marital settlement, your marital freedom, I command that altar to catch fire today. Yeah. The Bible said in Matthew 13 verse 28 that the enemy has done this. God says solitary in families. God is desirous of certain. You know, a male and female he created in them. There is this supernatural matchmaking taking place. But whatever is resisting the marriage of anyone here, whatever is not allowing you to drink water and drop the cup in your family, whatever the enemy is doing behind the scene to bring trouble, to bring delay, disappointment, I curse it today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. She had this testimony with us before one day. A woman had four daughters. A widow. Now, the first one, when she wanted to marry, got somebody and brought the person home. And they went to the village. That was the end of the story. As of the last time, I had no marriage. Second one, the same. Third one, the same. The last one, when she said she got somebody, the woman said, no, I won't go like this. And she came. She said, I want to see pastor. <laughs> she came. When she narrated the story, I told her this kind of prayer, they don't pray it inside, let's go outside. Anointed the ground for her, spoke to the air. Now whatever, whosoever have been doing this, heaven will reveal their iniquity. And the earth will be against them. That yeah. this time, it will work. Look at what happened. The day they said this, um, marriage to happen and they were to go home the elder sister to the husband was to come from Kano she collapsed she couldn't come one of them the uncles attacked by stroke they couldn't come <laughs> they couldn't do what they used to do before the only one that came had something like boy so it was uncomfortable we were all like this through they finish it going going as I'm talking to you now, she's the only one that is married correctly, has a baby boy, as of the last time I heard from them. Now hear me and hear me well. Whatever been crying will not cry again. Yeah. Whatever said you will not have your own children, as a married person, I command that thing to stop in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Somebody here is receiving twins in the name of Jesus. Yeah. One day, man went to the graveyard and was making incantation against the husband of one of us. And it seemed that the incantations were working. Because the husband suddenly, who was doing well, he was even building a house in the village, he abandoned it. To go for his business, he wouldn't do anything. He would just stay at, stay, stay at home watching film. But when she came and told me that, see, that she's one carrying the burden of the family now, and it shouldn't be. Yes, the woman can help, but she shouldn't be the one carrying the burden, paying her rent, doing this, doing that. Hallelujah. 
If something is not too good for the man, you can't know, but it's not normal. Say with me, it's not normal. And anything that is not normal will reverse the irreversible in Jesus' name. Yeah. And so we cry to God. You know what happened? The same man that been troubling this family saw trailer coming and went and dashed himself to the trailer free of charge. He was crushed to, crushed to pieces. And to show you that God was involved, this brother started doing well. Started building his house again. Now bought embroidering machine for the wife's uh, tailoring business and other things. Now hear me. I don't know who have been sitting on your destiny, on the destiny of your family, on the destiny of your children, on the destiny of your marriage. Today, their ugly hand is cut off in the name of Jesus. But there is something we need to have. We need to have the revelation of the word of God concerning our glorious marital destiny. For you to be free and be delivered from the hold of powers of darkness, you need a revelation of your glorious marital destiny. So 119 verse 130, the Bible told us, the entrance of the word of God give it light and it give it understanding to the simple. Remember, Arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord is in upon thee. Darkness will cover the earth and grow darkness over the people. But the glory of the Lord will be risen upon you. And Gentiles will come to your light and kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Isaiah 61 to 3. So darkness is everywhere. But when your light comes, darkness gives way. Because darkness will never ever have meeting with light. The only lady cried to me one day. <laughs> she was doing her youth service and she needed to settle down. And while I call her God, somebody from abroad, somebody, the person was living in, in Cyprus, he came and married her, took her there. She's doing, as I'm talking to you now, she's doing her PhD. She has a baby boy now. And that was the first marriage to happen in their family. Now, hear me and hear me well. Everyone in the verge of miracle marriage, as this God living, I command your miracle marriage settled. <laughs> oh, there are some that have seen who to marry, but money is a problem. Finance is a problem. Funding is a problem. I command the heaven above you to be open. Because when the, the king made a marriage for his son, all things were made available. All things were made ready. Every resource you require to make that marriage a reality, I command it to be released in the name of Jesus. Please understand that every child of God that desires to marry, God has given you the right to be settled in marriage. Because God is the one that settles people in marriage. Remember that Psalm 68 verse 6? God set their solitary in families. Marriage is good. Don't tell me it's a necessary evil. It's not a necessary evil. It's good. If God says something is good, it's good. Say, whoso findeth their wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor from the law. The favor starts from the finding, sir. It's not from marrying, from the finding. So from now, anyone that found, begin to enjoy favor in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not lack resources again. Evil patterns, vows, every form of oppression that is standing like every marital spell, disappointment, delays, standing against the marital settlement of anyone under the voice, under the sound of our voice, I command it to end in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever red thing you used to see, maybe you are married, bringing miscarriage, I command it to cease in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every man, every woman that come to defile you and before you know it, what seems to be good turns it bad. I decree that that is ended today in the name of Jesus. Amen. That evil food they used to feed you from, with. And before you know it, things are not going the way they're supposed to go. I command it to cease in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Every good thing is an entitlement of yours in Christ. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. That marriage is good. Therefore, receive your miracle spouse in the name of Jesus. Everyone right now that is married, 
that is experiencing some tumor, I command peace. I command the storm to be over. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every relationship that is about to collapse, I command healing right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody is saying, I can't take it no more, I'm quitting. Before you quit, think again. Have you been patient with your spouse? Please try. It may not be the best option. Remember, in marriage, the man is not always right. The woman is not always right. But the word of God is right and always right. Look for the right word. How then do I actualize my glorious marital destiny? Number one, remain in love with God. Remain in love with God. Remain in love with God. Why? We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And to them that are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. All things, including the seemingly disappointment. Maybe Tony walked out of your life after five years of courtship. Don't kill yourself. It's because a useless person has gone out of your life. God is bringing the good person. All things work together for good. All, not some. All. That's why you must remain in love with God. Number two, be committed to kingdom advancement endeavors. Be committed to kingdom advancement endeavors. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Including marriage. Including peace in marriage. Including help and supplies. Seek ye for the kingdom of God. Number three, Beware of pride. Beware of pride. Proverbs 15, 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Hebrews 13, 4 says, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undivided, but one among us and adulterous God will judge. Before honor is humility, but pride goes before a fall. Pride goes before a fall. There are some people today that are not married because of their pride. Can you take care of me? <laughs> Can you maintain me? Do you know how much is my Brazilian hair? How much is your salary? <laughs> Do you know who you are talking to? Slippers, no get size. Don't be doing like that until you go come to a pastor anoint. If you see somebody that has a vision, even if he has not achieved something now, <laughs> there is hope. Oh. Don't follow somebody with television and leave somebody with vision. You will soon watch the person with vision in your television. Because some people today, they just they want to look for what is glittering. All oh, that glittering is not good, sir. Some people, it's the educational qualification that is their problem. Do you know I have PhD? <laughs> Go and eat it. You'll be there claiming you have PhD and somebody with SAC is settled. Some people, it's their money that have entered their head. They feel they are so dollarized that they can't talk any lady that is hey, me, you want to eat my money. Chop my money. <laughs> <laughs> so they look down on everybody. And that's why nobody's agreeing to them. Please, cool down. Calm down. Stop treating everybody like a thing. She's not a piece of equipment. Parents also, please, let's help. Because some parents, they've already have in mind the kind of person that, that you must be a politician that marry my daughter. So once young graduate come now, he say, what do you have? How much do you have? 
have a, that person tomorrow you are rejecting can be the president tomorrow. A woman confessed to me. She confessed to me. Her daughter doesn't know this as I'm chatting with you. She confessed to me that she is a problem of her daughter. That look, this lady got somebody, they were in school together. Somebody they in school, they wanted to marry. She now went somewhere. I don't know where she went to. Don't go to where your problem will be compounded. And they told her that, look, the other person coming from America <laughs> is the one that your daughter should marry. As a matter of fact, there are children, children, children. Are, your daughter is carrying plenty of children. The minute they marry, you'll just be born in plenty of children. <laughs> because that one, the father had money. You see, words, words can be transferred. It may be somebody's turn today. It may be somebody's turn tomorrow. So there are certain things you should not use as a stick. Just ask God to give you direction. So because the father or the man has substance, the person was not prophesying based on that. She should marry that one. She leave this one, fresh graduate. What does he have? But do you know the story today? The same person now, if, as a matter of fact, see, they separated. It was the lady that was carrying the man. And they had only one child. The other person, they rejected, as I'm talking to you today, has all you well. She told me, sir, I was the problem of my daughter. She wanted to marry this man. I said, you were looking at him. So parents, let's just <laughs> help in Jesus' name. Of course, number four, you need the power of faith. Faith is central to whatever we take. You can't take anything from God without faith. For it, without faith, it's impossible. So if you want to marry, you need faith. You need faith. Faith in taking action. Some of you have seen who to marry. Take action. Take step. Go and talk to the person. You are seeing carrying shawarma, buying ice cream, giving recharge card, TP, all manner you are doing. You are even paying school fees. School fees is not bright price, though. Uh, don't be deceived, though. I solved a problem one day. The guy paid school fees and finished. The guy finished and told him, my people and your people know they marry after school. School fees, he told me, I said, school fees is not bright price, and it's true. You better pay the bright price before the school fees. <laughs> Hallelujah. But please, in the name of Jesus, take step. There are some of our young men. Ah, how can you be, ah, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You are waiting for God's time? God's time is now. Faith is now. Now faith is the substance of things to for. The evidence of things not seen. Take that step now. Go and tell her. You are there moving around, escorting from place to place until somebody will come and carry her. Every shyness, I curse it in Jesus' name. How can you rehearse the thing you want to tell the lady? You see, the thing will escape. How about? Oh, man of God, be bold. Be confident. Talk to her. Some people deliver their manifesto today. Oh. <laughs> and now, uh, young lady, see somebody talk to you. Please don't mess them up. Even if you don't want, there's a way to do it. Eh? Not that hey, slippers, no get size to me. Ah. Is it because we're in the same church? Please rise on your feet. <laughs> Glory to God. Just help them now. Help them. You don't know the courage demands someone to come and tell you, I want to marry you. You kill it and kill it that they can't talk to another person. But hear me, if somebody rejected you, go and talk to another person. At least there are seven people you can marry. Because the Bible told us when one door closes, another seven will open. So there are other people on the line. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if the person say he doesn't want, you can't look at the person. Turn your back and tell him, I want to marry. Make sure you deliver the manifesto. That's where the journey starts. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Everyone in life for miracle marriage gets set. This year is your year. Yeah. Those trusting God for their children, for their loved ones, they shall be settled. 
And everyone married here, looking for the fruit of the womb, looking for peace or joy in their home, I command restoration in the name of Jesus. The oil of your marriage will not cease. In Jesus' mighty name. Now we are going to pray before we partake of the anointing. Somebody is here. You need to give your life to Jesus first so that we can stand on the same platform. John 1.12, the Bible says, As many that received him to them gave him power to become the sons of God. Without Jesus Christ, crises are inevitable. Whether in life, marriage, until you accept and receive the Prince of Peace through genuine conviction and conversion, the Holy Ghost cannot give you peace. Jesus cannot give you peace. Nobody can give what he doesn't have. Only Jesus can give you peace. Somebody is here today, you want to have personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Please put your hand on your chest. Pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody is also here. You, you, you gave your life to Jesus someday, but you are no more there. Yes, pressures of life, pressures of friends took you out. You want to return to him, return to him now. Put your hand on your chest and pray the prayer of dedication with me. And somebody is here. You have been struggling with certain evil habits, and you know it, that only Jesus can help you. Sincerely, turn to him today. Let him help you. New Year Jesus didn't help you. Jesus can help you. If you're among the category of people I mentioned, please pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart you are the only Son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. I return to you. Return to me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for washing me clean with your precious blood in Jesus' mighty name. Please, you pray that prayer with me. Wave your hand to Jesus, wherever you are. Pray that prayer with me. God bless you. God bless you for your sincerity. God bless you. Please take a step. Come from wherever you are. Come to the front of the altar here and now quickly come. My body is your sanctuary.